what we're doing. Lovely. Okay. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back mm -hmm. to our class. So we're on um, lesson four now, uh, where we've been looking at um, lots of different insects and creepy crawlers and things. So um, obviously, we've done quite a few uh, different techniques now. Um, so this lesson, what I was planning to do is just to give people time um, to consolidate those skills, work on things a little bit longer um, and finish things off basically because um, I always get to this stage during the classes where I've introduced quite a few things and yes it doesn't take me quite as long to do stuff but um, um, obviously a lot of people need that time to uh, continue with the work. So we're going to do that today. Um, I've So what I've decided to do is work on just one thing, um, like a, a large moth picture that I found um, that's got these kind of eye shapes in it. And I'm going to work on that and try to sort of mix some of those techniques uh, together on the drawing that I do. So I'll be using, um, because I'm going bigger, I'm going to use a biro pen and perhaps um, add in some watercolour and pencils alongside that. So you'll be able to see how I put those things together um, during the course of the lesson uh, again. Um, and hopefully that will um, help you along with what you're doing too. Okay, so um, we'll, I'll show you the moth that I'm doing. So over here we've got the moth um, that I'm going to do. Um, actually, <laughs> it's a different one than the photograph I've just been drawing from. But it is a moth, I promise you. This I'm going to be doing a moth this evening. This is one of them. Uh, it has these lovely um, eye sort of shapes in it, which I believe um, everyone tells me that it's to uh, deter um, predators from snapping them up. Um, so, and I... On these moths are quite like the details, I like the, the blending of the colours and there's also some nice shapes and textures. So a very nice subject um, to work on. Um, a bit later on, um, during uh, the next few weeks, um, after we get back from a short break, um, I'm going to introduce uh, using some uh, paint, acrylic paint, and perhaps look at different ways that we can um, interpret this subject. Uh, and look at some other artists that have done it as well. Um, so you'll also remember that last week we looked at the colour wheel um, and this colour wheel here was, I talked about primary colours, secondary and tertiary colours and how you can just use maybe three of those colours which are the primary ones, the yellow, red and the blue to actually create uh, the other colours on the colour wheel just using pencils. Um, the centre, the very centre sort of circular area of this board was, um, grit. let's take for example the opposites, the opposite colours on the colour wheel. So let's say uh, red and green. So if you mix uh, green first of all and put red on top, you're going to get the one in the centre towards the, the bottom, just there. So you've got the green and then you've got green with white, green with black, and then green with red. If we go from red at the top and you add a little bit of white, you're going to get something like this pinkish one. And then if you add a bit of black, you've got something that's kind of a dark, darkish looking brown. And then if we add red and then green on top, you're going to get this reddish sort of brown on here. So it does depend, as I mentioned last week, it does depend on what order you uh, apply those colours according to exactly what you end up with. Okay, um, the other things to bear in mind are um, using a, a blending stick um, to help you smooth off colours. Uh, you can also use a white if you haven't got a blending stick and then just keep applying layers of colour. I'll do a blend in a minute just to sort of um, demonstrate that again. Um, but basically this is what we're working on today. So you'll remember from before um, we would do it. We, we've been, as you all know, we've been um, drawing these insects arranged on a sheet of paper. Um, if you found it like a bit sort of tricky doing that, um, arranging that composition, it's perfectly all right just to do one or two on a sheet of paper and then trying out a different technique, uh, depending on where you are with everything. 
All right, so uh, we'll go over to my um, table, my desk rather, and we'll have a look at um, the drawing that I've done already. So you'll remember that, um, let's see if we get a bit better focused. So in the first week we did the pencil, so if you're still working on that or you've got bits to finish off, please carry on with that. Um, we've also uh, then did a pen one where we used a rollerball and biro. Uh, I'm going to be using biro exclusively at first. And then over here, colour pencil and biro and pen. And if you remember as well, I also used the acrylic pen on there as well, uh, the white acrylic pen to bring out those highlights. So the black and the white really helps you to bring out um, the contrast in the image as well. So I'm just about to see where I've been adding in these little extra marks and things. So we've got little dots and things in there and it kind of helps to loosen up the image um, and make it a bit more sort of, uh, give it a bit more movement and excitement perhaps. Okay, uh, and don't forget as well, we, we also use the embossers uh, on here, but you can definitely use them on the colour pencils. I didn't do that so much last week, but um, the embossers help you to do these tiny highlights. All right, um, so this is this is actually the moth <laughs> that I've decided to do. Um, I, I put a different one on the screen. I don't know how I managed to do that, but probably because I collected a few and put them in the folder on the drive. Um, but I quite like this because you've got the textures on here um, and then we've got, again, we've got those nice eye shapes, which are pretty, pretty cool and interesting. And then you've got the, the hairy um, kind of body on here. So there's lots to sort of um, experiment with. Now, if you're um, working from a computer or something like that, um, sometimes if you're just working with black and white to begin with, it's quite nice. Um, to get a black and white version of the photo um, because colors can be quite distracting at times um, when you're just wanting to look at the tone and shadow um, if you're working on it from a screen and you've got a photo on screen you can use a filter either on your phone or um, on your computer and turn it to black and white the easiest way to do it on the computer if you've not done it before is to um, is to go to print and then go to um, I think it's called printer settings and there's a bit that there's a, an option when that comes up grayscale so you click on grayscale and it will turn it into a black and white picture like that on your phone it's just a case of going to edit uh, and in edit there's usually an option to turn your picture black and white okay but that's if you need to do that you know you might not need to do that at this stage um, so uh, yes, I've got the wrong moth on the on the screen there, but um, I'm going to be working from this beautiful orangey moth. I quite like the other one now, actually looking at it. But I think I'll go for this one. Okay, all right. So um, now we're going to just dive in and get started um, because I think everybody's got bits and pieces uh, to get on with. Um, but if you haven't, there's plenty of photographs on the drive still that you can. Uh, work with and you can also keep if you want to as well you could keep applying uh, stuff to your uh, composition so you could perhaps put in some more insects or work into the background a little bit more as well um, I thought it'd be more useful for everybody tonight if I did a new one so you can see how um, I tackle the biro on here as well all right so um, does anyone have any questions about what we're going to do this evening no. <laughs> no. Okay. And has everybody got something uh, that they're working on and happy? Um, just so I know. <laughs> uh, if anyone's not happy or, or need some help or whatever, please let me know. And Brian and Olivia, if you need some help to um, just send me a message or um, either on the Zoom app or onto my phone and um, I'll do my best to answer you as soon as I can. Okay. Great. Are you okay there, Camilla? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay. Um, so I'm going to work on um, Morris the Moth over here. Are you okay there, Pragati? Pragati? 
I think you're frozen. Have you frozen? I think she's frozen. Oh, yeah, she's frozen. Hopefully she'll be back in a sec. Brilliant. Lovely. So, um... I've started to draw out this moth already while we were waiting for the class to start. Um, I'll just turn off these for a second. Uh, these two. So we can, oops, not that one. Do -do, do -do. Uh, beetle, there he goes. Right. I think we've lost Pranky at the moment. Right, oh gosh, there's the colour wheel again. There we go. So, um, yeah, it's, as you can see, it fills up my whole screen this evening. But what I've started to do here is... Um, now, one, um, just one useful thing, um, and we I think we might have mentioned this before, if you're working on... An, um, well, you're all working on insects, but um, if you take your insect divide it in half they are symmetrical so one thing you could try out um, which is really good and there's loads of exercises like this um, on the internet if you look up drawing insects if you fold your piece of paper in half and draw the other half of the insect then you can sort of um, it, it kind of helps you to draw it's called a half we call it a half and half drawing um, so potentially you could fold your photograph in half and draw the other half, which works, which does work really nicely uh, to help you get the proportions and things of the insect. Um, I'll perhaps post a few of those on the uh, drive if anyone's interested in trying those out. Um, now, what I did on this to get the correct length of the wings. Okay, or near nearest to correct as I can at this stage, is I first of all drew a horizontal line across here. Or well, it's not horizontal to the paper, but it is kind of straight across here. Uh, and then I sketched in the shape of the top of this head just here. All right. Now, um, what you can do then is what's called a comparative um, sort of drawing. Okay. Um, so I'm not, as you probably noticed, I'm not using a grid here, but um, you can work out how many of these heads it is um, to go all the way across to the tip of the wing over there. So if I was to measure that and then go one, two, three, and maybe a half, and then go over to my head that I've drawn in, take a measurement on my pencil of the head that I sketched in and then go one, two, three and about a half then I've kind of got a pretty good idea of the actual size of the wing in comparison to the rest of the body okay so if you're you know if you decide you, you just want to sketch the thing out then start with something that you can uh, measure and you can do this with absolutely anything you're drawing, um, is you can take one area and compare it to the others. And then, of course, you can um, you could take that area again and use it to measure how long the body is going to be. So, um, so down to, you have to make sure you know where you're stopping. So on that point just there, put my finger on it, and I take that width of that head and turn it, I've got one two and a half approximately uh, and even like with this or using a grid you will see things that need changing it's perfectly normal for things not to go exactly to plan um, because um, as I've said so many times before you're learning about what you're looking at um, so you know you notice things that you wouldn't have noticed before and that's one of the the nicest things about drawing is that it makes you really look at what you're um, drawing and so forth uh, which is fantastic uh, you'll hear um, David Hockney talk about how people don't really look at things um, but as an artist 
you do. You look more closely at things and study them and learn more about them and enjoy looking at them as well. So it's, it's a lot of fun from that point of view. All right. Um, so I'm going to carry on with pencil, first of all, sketching out um, this beautiful moth, Morris. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to start working in with the biro pen and introducing some other bits as I go along um, just to see what happens, really. So I thought that would be nice fun, nice bit of fun this evening. Uh, one thing that I'm doing right now is I've decided just to stand up while I'm doing my drawing as well, which is why I've just switched my camera off. Um, it's so that if you're sitting down and sketching something out, the perspective of what you're looking at on the flat surface of the page can change um, because of the angle you're looking at it. So sometimes when because I'm drawing something a little bit bigger than I've done previously, I'm I'm actually stood up um, because then I can get um, the full kind of um, I can get the full picture without any distortions from that way. So I'm looking at it from directly above here, which is really um, useful uh, to help get a little bit more of a better perspective on what I'm sketching. Um, it's not always necessary. Um, uh, you'll see, you know, obviously artists like to work on an easel often as well. Uh, and an easel um, will be upright and allow you to stand back from something as well. One of the things we often do in the art class as well is you, if you photograph your work on your mobile or something like that, uh, uh, you often get a, a different view of your picture as well. So you may, it gets a little bit smaller, doesn't it? And um, <laughs> so many times I've heard people say, oh, it looks really good. Um, it looks really good on my phone. It looks better on my phone. And it's because you're looking at it from a bit further away and it's condensed all that detail um, a little bit more as well. So um, try it out if you've not tried it out before. Uh, and see what you think, you know, um, you might find your drawing looks even better um, when you stood up and took a photograph of it. Okay, as, as I explained, I'm using uh, the comparative technique. You can see me talking about, um, here I'm talking about how you can hold the pencil at a certain angle as well, um, and then take the angle from the photograph or from whatever you're looking at when you're observing, and then put that angle onto your paper at the same time. So I'm just getting all the um, basic sort of structure of um, this moth here in order to help me to um, then have a structure to work with and uh, so that I can refine the drawing as I'm working on it as well. I decided to work on a, a larger scale 
um, this evening because what I wanted to do essentially was um, get into the closer in on the detail of this beautiful moth so we've got all these mottled textures there's a lot of hair on the back or what seems to be I don't know if you call it hair or fur <laughs> on a moth like this but certainly there's lots of this softness that you you um, expect to see on one of these creatures so I was trying here to um, vary the kind of mark making that I'm using as well um, to get those different textures um, on those um, antennae I guess you'd call them on the top there I've just put in some rough outlines uh, with the diagonal line showing the shape of the um, antennae as well and I'll come back to that in um, a little bit just to work back into um, into those shapes so what you'll find um, just with pen as with pencils is that you put some marks down uh, you add the tone and shadow and so forth uh, and then frequently what I find is that I go back and go back over certain areas to add more um, more marks or more tone and shadow so it is a case of layering up those marks on top of each other um, you just saw me there at the top of the head um, I did um, some very light hatching back over the top of the head and that was just really to take the tone down even further um, to give give it a bit more depth but not to lose all those marks that I'd previously put underneath so we're giving it a bit more form perhaps and a little bit more uh, tone but um, preserving some of the marks on top as well so you'll see as I progress I add much finer marks to the uh, to the drawing um, so that you do get some texture even on the lightest parts of the moth's wings. The marks are also um, as you can see in the fur directional so they follow the shape of the wings and the direction that the fur um, or the hairs go in as they travel across the back there of this um, moth so even these circles um, I've tried to keep the direction again of the the fur on the uh, spots so we know the spots around and everything but you can um, use directional marks to get this sense that they're made of all these fine hairs even on the back there where the shapes are quite graphic in fact so as you can see some of the marks that um, I previously put down in pencil I'm kind of adding a bit more detail and refining those as I go along um, those curvy shapes on the down there at the bottom of the wing I'm working on now they're also using um, hatching um, to show the shape of them but without just drawing a normal line we're actually drawing lots of small lines so that we maintain that lovely texture of the hairs here we've got that mottled effect and um, you, I mean you can bring in some of your own kind of ideas to the mark making here I've done kind of a, a scumbly effect on that area you can see in the center just there and then uh, here the marks change slightly because there's kind of um, this speckly effect on that part of the wing So this lesson um, is around two hours long so I was working on this for a few hours and um, the fun bit about it was working on a large size rather than um, a sm obviously the smaller ones that we'd been doing in previous lessons so it really enabled you to enjoy or me to enjoy those um, details 
but um, over two hours it obviously is going to take you a lot longer to cover the whole of the insect. So here we go, this is more of a scumble along the bottom there. The scumble also adding tone, but adding a slightly different texture that you can see down there at the bottom. Um, in a little bit what I do is I start adding over the top some watercolour and then finally a little bit of pencil. I think there's a little way to go yet. You can see the finer marks that I've been putting on the wing. Wanted to sort of show that texture that we've been talking about quite a lot. So the finer marks allow me to add more tone generally over the whole of the wing. And I'll do more of that uh, in a bit. So what I do is I pick up, there you go, I've picked up the black and white copy. And on the black and white copy I can see, oh yes, there's much more tone than perhaps I noticed before with the colour. So I'm darkening down areas to give a bit more form, but also to really bring out the tonal qualities in the colours on the wings. So as I said before, having a black and white image or copy of the image is quite useful. So at this stage I thought, well, we're getting pretty close now to uh, over an hour and a half of working. So I've used the watercolours to start adding some colour first of all. Um, now I'm just working on cartridge paper here so I do have to be uh, gentle and not um, overwork the areas because otherwise I'll start going through the paper. I should really work on watercolours for this but well um, this is a study after all so I, I'm not too too worried about that. Um, inside of the fur on the body particularly in the centre there I've used some green with mixed with brown um, to change the tone uh, sorry to change yeah to ch add shadow really um, to certain areas of the body and to add a bit more variety in the color um, and I'm mixing I am mixing the colors in the palette before I apply them here but I'm also then layering um, thin washes of the color over the top uh, and being aware of the fragile, uh, how fragile the the um, paper is. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's building up quite nicely now. Um, and then in a short while, I I let it dry a little bit. And um, and I do recommend you letting it dry completely before having a little play around with um, some colour pencils and I think yeah I just do a little bit of that and you'll find the colour pencils if they're soft enough will really just bring out some more of the detail you can use mark making again like we've been doing before using um, the pencils so you can really start to draw out the qualities of uh, the details in the wings and so forth so it's really good fun. Anyway, I might do a bit more of that on Friday, but um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this this evening and I'll see you in a few weeks. Have a good week. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.